Hey guys, this is Jared Palmer with Data Medics Data Recovery in Cranston, Rhode Island. Uh, today I'm going to take you through the basics of PC3000 UDMA. Now this is one of the professional data recovery tools used by uh, data recovery professionals around the world. It's provided by ACE Laboratories and today we're just going to take you through some of the basic interface so you can kind of get an idea what this tool does and uh, how it's used. So when you first open the program you'll notice uh, you're going to come to this main utility selection screen. Now basically here you're just going to have uh, different primary categories of hard drives uh, you know based on brand name and the uh, overall models. You'll also have, notice you have u universal utility. Uh, this is used on any hard drive. It's different utilities that can test read write functionality, um, check for slow reading sectors, things like that. So uh, you'll notice in the corner we have our power supply switch. You can switch between the two channels. Uh, you are able to connect more than one hard drive at a time uh, to the interface. And you can actually perform multiple recoveries. Although they don't recommend you do that with this system, they actually recommend that you use one channel for your source drive and one for your target drive. Uh, however, it does work to image multiple drives at the same time. So we're going to start off here. We're just going to power it on. Now you'll notice in the bottom you have your status registers. Uh, you can see at this point the hard drive is busy, then it'll get to a ready state where these two lights go on. That lets us know the hard drive is now able to send and receive data. Now we're using a good hard drive here, but of course with a damaged drive uh, the results may be different in any of the steps that we're going to show you here. So uh, one of the first things you'll notice is this auto button right here. Now that's used to automatically select the appropriate utility for the drive. So go ahead and press that button and you'll notice in this case it's a Western Digital Marvel series drive. Once it selects that, we can go ahead and press this uh, launch button right here. So when it first sends the launch, you'll have a few options. Uh, read hard drive identification is one of the defaults you're going to want to leave on in most cases. Go ahead and allow it to load up. Uh, now you'll notice here at the beginning, it's going to see a mode. Um, sometimes if you're using a hard drive that's not functional, it may go into kernel mode or it may not detect whatsoever. As you can see, this hard drive here detected just fine. So it's in normal mode. Now here you'll see all the subfamilies of different Western Digital hard drives within the Marvel family. And as you can see, there's quite a few of them. Uh, with some data recovery systems, you'll spend quite a bit of time just trying to identify which family it is. Fortunately, with PC3000, uh, you can very simply hit this auto detect button. It will check the surface area of the drive quickly and immediately identifies this as an Everest 5 family hard drive. So once they have the correct family selected, go ahead and hit utility start. And you'll see it'll read some basic settings off of the hard drive, find out your ROM version, uh, find out if there's a password set. And again, you'll see this is a normal startup. Now you notice everything is in black. If you see things in red, that's notifying you that there is a problem with that particular hard drive. So now in the basic utility, now again, it's going to vary from hard drive to hard drive. Uh, this is a pretty typical Western Digital Marvel family utility. Uh, you're going to notice these different buttons at the top as well as different menus uh, that you have as well different tests that you can run. Um, one thing I like to do anytime we connect to a new hard drive, go ahead and do the resources backup. So when you select this, it's going to prompt you to create a profile. Uh, again, a new profile is created for each hard drive or each job that we work on. Uh, once a profile is created, we'll have the option to back up different parts of the hard drive specific information, the ROM, service area modules, and service area tracks. So we go ahead and hit OK and it'll go through and back up all of those resources. So this uh, may take a few minutes, so we'll just go ahead and let this run. Okay, so now I've gone ahead and paused this process. Uh, partway through backing up the modules, it finally got to the point where it started backing up the tracks, and you'll notice right away we, we see some red text here, and this tells us there's some uh, disk damage error. So this means that there's actually a difficulty reading that, that particular track. Um, in this case, it was uh, cylinder negative 134 on head 1, and, and so that red right there lets us know there's a problem. Now, we actually thought this was a healthy drive. It's just one we happened to pull off the shelf, but as you can see, there are some issues. So, uh, you know, in a case like this, you have all types of uh, different options within PC3000. Uh, we're just going to want to read the service tracks, which we were unable to do during the normal backup. You'll notice we can here now select different tracks, and in this case, we can actually read by composite read. So since that one track didn't seem to want to read from that head, we'll leave it on composite read. What it'll do is read from both read-write heads, and if it has difficulty reading uh, 
one head in particular, it'll just switch and continue reading from the other head, thus building a composite image. And this is one of the really useful tools that PC3000 has, which uh, no other tool to my knowledge is able to do this. Um, we have many cases where uh, simply this ability alone we're able to recover data from a damaged hard drive. So we're just going to go ahead and let this finish. I'll pause the video for a moment. Okay, so we finished backing up all of the tracks from the service area of this hard drive. Uh, as you can see, if we scroll up a little bit, uh, all of the tracks are now in black, which means they were all read correctly with no errors. So now that we've made a backup of this, I'll just show you some of the basic features, some of the menus of PC3000 in a typical Western Digital utility. So you'll notice these different little images up top. Uh, you have uh, your information. This one will uh, pull up different information about the hard drive so you can kind of understand what you're dealing with. Uh, this is useful information if you're trying to find a, a parts donor or if you're trying to find uh, another, you need firmware resources from another hard drive. This can give you the information you need to know where to look. Uh, then you're going to find we have the ROM uh, utility, uh, it, <clears throat> the ROM uh, read and write utilities here. Uh, this is handy when you're trying to program uh, printed circuit boards. Uh, you can also make certain edits to the ROM. You can view its information. Uh, it'll tell you different things such as the micro jogs of the hard drive, which is useful if you're trying to look for read-write heads and you want to make sure you have a close enough donor hard drive. Uh, then you'll see we also have the uh, RAM utility. Uh, this is particularly useful if you want to edit your head map. Uh, you can disable read-write heads that are unstable, making it easier to image the read-write heads that are functioning properly. Uh, then you'll have the uh, service area utilities. Uh, you notice here we have different things such as service area structure test, heads test, uh, all, all sorts of different things, translator regeneration. Uh, there's a whole lot of features here. Now, one thing about PC3000, uh, on first glance, it looks like it might be a pretty simple tool. Uh, there doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of different options here, but uh, one thing I have to stress is there's a lot of layers of complexity to PC3000. Uh, different families have all types of uh, kind of hidden menus and features that you may not even realize are there until the first time you need some support or you have somebody remote in and they're showing you different features. And so there's certainly all different levels of complexity to this. Um, for example, we go to the utility extensions here, we can get into uh, something called the modules directory. Now here we see uh, all different modules for this hard drive. Uh, it keeps track of which are the most critical modules, tells you which ones can be replaced from another hard drive, um, tells you a little bit about what many of them do. From within here you can view different modules. Uh, depending on which module you open, uh, you may have different abilities to edit certain information within that module. So there's certainly a lot of complexity here. Uh, this is not a tool that uh, you should just purchase and start using right away with no training. Uh, it takes quite a bit of time to really master how to use a tool such as this. Uh, for example, we go into the hard drive identification module. Uh, we can go into here and there's different information we can actually edit here. We can change the hard drive serial number. We can change the LBA size uh, all from just within this one module. Uh, in different modules you'll have different features that you can change about that module. So uh, it's really a very complex tool. Uh, we're able to do different features such as uh, we can check modules. It'll run a basic test, see the checksum, turns green. That lets us know uh, that that module is good. Uh, certain other modules might not. Uh, for example, module, let's see, I believe 6F if it has it. That one almost always reads an error. Let's see. No, no, not, not on this hard drive. Okay. But uh, so this is very useful for diagnosing firmware issues, uh, other problems with hard drives, and uh, getting them to an operable state where you can then extract the data. So that, that's just the basic rundown. Again, there's a whole lot of different uh, levels of complexity to this. So it certainly is something that's going to take quite a bit of time to master. Now uh, you have different features for unlocking passwords, changing different security features. So it's a, certainly a, a nice tool. Now you also have your exit button here, as well as some different format and service test buttons. These are primarily used for um, refurbishing hard drives. So in your data recovery, uh, you're mostly going to focus on these, working with your ROM, RAM, and service area. So we'll go ahead and exit the utility. Now we also have the universal utility. And I'll just quickly show you what that is. Go ahead and load up the universal utility. 
it gives us some basic smart information, GSense error rate, uncorrectable sector count, so we can learn a little bit about this hard drive. Um, <clears throat> one feature I like about this, which is probably one of the only features I occasionally use, uh, just go into reading test to test reading. Um, I like to set this to random and let it run some tests. And as you can see here, it starts counting through different LPAs, reading randomly. Uh, it's a good way to let yourself to find out about a hard drive and whether it's having uh, some type of issue, such as a failed read-write head or bad sectors causing it to become unstable. So you can kind of get an idea of how well a hard drive is operating. It's a nice feature for simply testing a drive that doesn't seem to have much wrong with it. Okay, so then uh, you'll also notice you'll have your data extractor. Now we're going to make a different video about this, but uh, very quickly if we just open up the data extractor tab, you notice we can create new tasks. Select our source drive. You can now select a destination drive, such as an image file, the other channel, or if we had another hard drive, that would appear as well. We're just going to do an image file because we're not actually going to image this drive. And as you'll notice, we're now in the data extractor tool. Now you'll see here we have a map of all the sectors. This is a visual representation of every sector of the entire hard drive. You could double click in here and view an individual sector if you like. Uh, you can simply hit the go button here and it'll begin imaging the hard drive. So as you can see, these green boxes, green of course meaning it's been read successfully. Um, this is a blank hard drive, so it's to be expected that it's all zeros. So I'm going to stop that. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of different parameters we can adjust here with regard to the imaging. We can adjust the block size, so if the hard drive is unstable, sometimes it may read better at a smaller block size. Uh, up here, the loss of readiness. This is one of the most uh, used tabs right here. Uh, we can adjust how much it'll jump after a single bad sector is hit. We can also adjust the timeouts, and this is really useful for unstable drives with a lot of bad sectors. Um, we can initially set this to a, a really low number, like just a couple hundred milliseconds on these first two. Uh, that will make it uh, very quick to skip over areas that are having difficulty reading. That way there we can read all of the, the better sector areas. And then later on, once we have 95% of the data, we can go back, try to clean up those errors with a longer timeout. So. That's just some basics of PC3000. Uh, if you have any questions about it, uh, feel free to uh, post it in the comments section below uh, or visit our website, www.data-medics.com. So it's data medics with a hyphen, data-medics.com. Uh, we have a forum on there. We have a blog as well as different case studies. So you can learn quite a bit about uh, using tools such as PC3000 from our website. Hope you enjoyed this video. And again, this is, my name is Jared, and I'm with Datamedics. Thank you.